What is up, YouTube? And welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. Straight in to showing you the sweeper that has been set up with decent enough depth to allow us to do some digging but not have to then manually collect all of the resources. You can see there is liquid chlorine. Now, I'm not sure if I need it or want it, but I'm going to get it because it exists. Of course, liquid, no, solid chlorine um, can be melted and turned into liquid chlorine, and that's what we are after. So all I'm going to do is ask them to dig it out. The sweeper will automatically pick up whatever they drop as soon as they drop it. As long as it's not too much, but they're in because there's only a couple of people here, right? So um, that will then go into a belt loader, which then goes into a rocket loader and goes into the inventory of the rocket. So we are pumping the liquid chlorine already. You've seen that. The tank there is about 50% full. Yes, 50% full. And the four gassy moves on board as well. The bottom one's bugged a bit. But, yep, it's there. And it will then automatically get placed into this, as you can see. Now, of course, this rocket, as soon as it's full with liquid chlorine, will leave. That is the only thing I'm waiting for. Nothing else. Um, if we haven't collected all the solid chlorine by then, I'll leave it there. But to be honest, it's look how quick it's picking it up. It's pretty quick. You can see as they dig, immediately the sweeper is just grabbing that solid chlorine and throwing it into the storage of the rocket. I should have used the rocket loaders a lot sooner. Now I've realized how they work and what they do. Every time I play this game from here on out, uh, I will be using those because they are fantastic. Now, selecting what I do want to collect and what I don't. The bleach, slow, bleach stone, I'm not too bothered about. I will get these on the surface because I can reach them. And, of course, it's within range of the sweeper. So, if the duplicates get a chance to dig it up, then brilliant. If they don't, then never mind. The priority, of course, is the solid chlorine. Of course, there is a, a line there which, if I dig any deeper than that, the sweeper won't be able to reach anyway. So, that's why I stopped there. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel and the algorithm gods of YouTube. Trying out the addition to the drill cone, which allows you to add an, uh, 1,500 kilos of diamond. That's an additional 1,500. So 2,500 kilos of diamond in total, which means that I should be able to fill that large cargo bay there of 50, I think it's 56,000 kilos or 56 tons. However, actually getting the rocket built with that incorporated and having enough fuel to go anywhere useful, I couldn't quite figure it out. There, are, there is obviously a magic number and maybe you need to use cryofuels to use it, I don't know. So this guy's been struggling for a while. Uh, he, he has to go into the rocket, come out and hold his breath. Now I found a Atmo suit. I'm expecting the Atmo suit to have some oxygen in it because usually when I remember, I obviously take them off the uh, duplicates when they're in any shorts. So I need to get him to wear it. I'm having trouble and that's because I'm choosing the wrong person. Basically, his name's Max but there's more than one Max, so that's why I'm struggling. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with me trying to figure it out, but yeah, there's more than one Max is the issue. And upon realising the issue, there we go. So it's got half a tank, right? Half a tank of oxygen in there, which is better than nothing. All it means he's going to continue to do the jobs that I've asked him to do, but for longer. Because the only reason the, he kept having to go back is because, of course, hold his breath for too long. So as he's digging, you can see immediately the solid chlorine drops. And the, the you can't see it, it's off screen. But the sweeper is picking it up. There it goes. So nice and clean. Now, I told it to dig there. I'm an idiot. I don't know why I told him to do that because I know we can't dig there. But I obviously got distracted. And you can see that's not being picked up because it can't reach. And that's where I realized, whoops. So then continue to do the bit that I did set. Now, there isn't really much else for him to do. It's just wasting time while we wait for the liquid tank to fill up, remember. So... It doesn't hurt, and of course, all of this oxygen, when it runs out, he can then take the suit off and continue holding his breath. Uh, I, I could probably f send one over using the interplanetary sender. Well, I definitely could. Uh, but as you can see, there's not much point. The tank is almost ready to go, and as soon as it is, then we go. 
And just like that, we are ready. Just made him make sure he finished up everything in terms of the pumping. Now, the coal that we have and the pumps that are working are still running. They will just now back up the liquid chlorine into that liquid tank that is there next to the belt loader. The idea being then, if we come back, we already have it in there ready to go. And you don't have to rely on the pumps, which means you don't have to rely on power. That is a lot of heat coming out of there. And with the magic of editing, we are, of course, already home. So all I need to do now is to take this tank of fluard to a, another tank that is in the base. Then you can use that to pump into the individual rockets. As you can see, I've already got a setup in place with three separate shut valves, shut off valves. And again, this is before I realized that there are proper fuel oxidizer lo loaders and stuff. So it's me being a noob. Now, firstly, I am going to release the critters. And do tell me if there's a way of doing this that's not as annoying as this. So by I've caught them, I've wrangled them, I've put them in the critter containers. But now I have to wrangle them again because they're loose at home. I have a little square there. I just want to try them out. I don't know what their expectation is. As far as I'm aware, other than the brackeen that they you can milk them for, which at this stage in the game, I'm not sure I'm going to investigate that. They also eat the grass and off gas, natural gas, which is, is to be honest, it's, it's just like cows, right? Cows eat grass and then crap and fart a lot. It's just what they do. So that is what the gassy moves do as well. But you can milk them for, I think it's the brackeen, which is the magic potion that makes critters very very happy and you can also use it for some end game constructions or liquids which again i'm not sure we're going to need to get to the most complex liquids i'm looking to do are in order anyway is super coolant because we need that to get into cryo and as soon as we get super coolant made we will then start making the liquid oxygen for the oxidizer and the liquid hydrogen for the fuel. Now, the best ratio for them is two large fuel tanks of liquid hydrogen, one tank of liquid oxidizer, and that is your max distance that you can gain from a rocket. Though still, I'm not sure how you would fit that into a drill rocket because, of course, you wouldn't be able to store it anyway. I don't know. Let me know any ideas or if you've got any images or anything, please do share them. I would be interested to know how to do like an OP rocket. Or at least the most efficient rocket you can do in the game. Without me having to just Google it and cheat, which you know by now I'm sure that I don't like doing. So for the gas grass that the gassy moves eat, there is a very significant amount of light requirements. There is also a, a quite a lot of requirements actually. These light bulbs will not cut it. They're each light, sorry, each plant requires, I believe it's 11,000 lumens of light, which you can get from this giant sun lamp that uses 1,000 watts of light, but you will only get it for, I don't know, three or four of the squares underneath it, those ones that go out to the edge, although it looks like it's in range, is not. So you will need at least three of those in this room to get all of them plants growing. Which, of course, is a crap ton of power and a crap ton of heat. Now, again, we're not going into the end game bracking milking of them in this season because I'm more interested in the space travel now and getting the resources that we need. Um, but I'm not sure if it's worth it anyway. The buff you get to your critters from them having the brackeen i would be interested to know how good is it because there's a lot of infrastructure i use that word a lot but there is there's a lot of infrastructure to set up to get them working the plants the, the gas grass needs liquid chlorine which in itself is not the easiest of liquids to produce but then also storing it in pipes is obviously going to blow out and cause damage and then waste it it doesn't seem to matter what gas is in the room, so that's good. Of course, they are going to off-gas natural gas, but it just seems to me like it's not worth the hassle. I am open to be proven wrong, but we shall see. 
and of course ripping out the chlorine line means that the the pipe then for the water to get in is broken as well so i think in future i need to set this up better we need a line that goes from the intake to the chlorine storage pipe which is that one there on the left hand side i could replace it with the power inlet and then it would just be a 90 degree corner straight into the chlorine tank and then water can just go past that i hope um, obviously although it's it's really interesting how they do it in the game and now i understand it it does mean that my stake in the pipe in there just as a storage pipe which is cheesy i know um although it works doesn't work for moving any other liquids around the cosmos and I think that there is obviously a, another way. You could use liquid tanks, but I can't imagine how people would use a liquid tank inside a rocket setup um, where it doesn't take up more space than they already need. I mean, the, the setup I've got where we've got a bedroom, a bathroom, and then a grand hall, great hall. I just can't see a way of there being space in there to put a water tank of all things i mean they're only one size they're ugly i don't know just getting some power in as you can see because that light requires so much power i'm not even going to waste my time putting in a transformer i'm just going to wire it directly to the main grid again this is a very 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 temporary setup just to test them out and see what they are like and what they do uh, if i was going to keep them permanently i would of course build them into the tower critter tower that we had from only a couple of episodes into this series actually and that has been going well for us ever since and yes to get the liquid out now i need to plumb the out pipe so as you can see that is the one there on the left that i've added the green one and now plumb that into the top right where it goes out of the capsule so there's a lot of piping to do to make this work, and I never expected it to burn. I just assumed it would automatically just go into the, the storage tank and out. I was very wrong, um, and in the future, at least we know. Of course, using filters would make this a lot easier, but you wouldn't put the filters inside here. You would have to put them on the outside, because otherwise, again, it takes space, power, and I'm pretty sure filters, decor-wise, are ugly as crap. Not quite as bad as um, the heavy watt cable, though. And there we go, a little bit later on, you can see there is two liquid chlorine oxidizer tanks there, and they are now being filled up. I'm trying to micromanage the amount of liquid released so that there's none left in the pipe to cause pipes to break. Some of those pipes required extra ladders. The ones in between each of the rockets required extra ladders to build those, of course, and then I broke them out. Well, not the bottom ones, but the top ones. I broke them out to make it look neater. Now we'll wait. Now we'll look to see if, because the fullerene that we want to collect, which is what we desperately need to make the super coolant, I want to collect as much as that as possible. Now I did overestimate how much liquid coolant you need. I wanted thousands and thousands of kilos to make sure I'd got enough, but actually the pipe only holds 20, doesn't it? So in a pipe that's only sort of 20 or 30 pipes long, which is easily a cooling loop, that's what is it four to six hundred kilos of liquid is enough so i do end up making a lot more super coolant than i need spoiler but you know it's you, you live and you learn right so we now have a rocket that has the capability of two tanks of liquid chlorine oxidizer now for those that don't know liquid chlorine oxidizer is in between the oxali or the solid oxygen that you can use and the liquid oxygen that is obviously the best in the game so liquid oxygen is the best the chlorine added by the mod is the second best and that's what we're going to use until obviously we can get down to those temperatures the temperatures required for turning oxygen into liquid is around negative 180 degrees for the hydrogen it is negative 255 ish degrees 260 degrees somewhere around there so significantly colder, significantly colder, but once you've got the super coolant, it doesn't actually matter because you can do both anyway. Um, you've just got to be careful. The super coolant freezes at like 10 degrees colder than the hydrogen turns to liquid, um, of course, because you push in there Kelvin, 
like absolute zero, which you can't get any colder than absolute zero. That is what physics says. We know that. Um, so everything has to freeze at that point, really. So with the most up-to-date rocket so far, we can produce uh, liquid fuel being petroleum and chlorine as the oxidizer. We're going to send that away, away to the fullerene cloud. That will, of course, then hopefully bring back enough that we can finally build the super coolant. The gassy moves now seem happier. They have the light, which they don't need, but the plants do. So the plants, the gas grass that I'm growing in there now is growing. It is getting liquid chlorine as its hydration. And you can see it there going down the pipe. Of course, that's going to go bad because whatever isn't absorbed by the plants will stay in the pipe. And eventually, even though it is a ceramic insulated pipe, eventually it's going to warm up and gas off if it's not used quick enough. But it's just going to off-gas into the farm, which the gas cows don't seem to care about. They're not bothered about being in chlorine, it looks like. So yeah, two there. I've used glass tiles underneath so that the tiles directly underneath the light are also used. Um, because, of course, if you use any other tile, it would block the light. This rocket is almost ready to send beyond other ways, but I'm having a few issues with them reaching the pipes for some reason. I do have a bit of a stage where it's quite clear that there's a lot more work for them to do than I have duplicates, or at least usually anyway, it was where I was having problems with the Atmos suits, but I know the Atmos suits are staying above board because I keep making sure to make new ones. I, I've basically got probably 15 to 20 Atmos suits more than I need, just so that the any issues, we've always got spares. Now just playing around with the pipe, because when I set this up, I assumed that one chlor liquid chlorine oxidizer tank was going to be enough, similar to the efficiency of oxygen, liquid oxygen, but it's not, you need two. So I've obviously built the second one, but then the piping that I put in is out of sync. Them three pipes there is for each rocket, so I need it to go over into the bottom tank and then up the top, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. But of course, I don't want the lines to intermingle because then I'll get liquid chlorine going in places I don't want it. We already know that it's going to be messy. Any liquid chlorine that is left in the pipe will eventually gas off. Now, while it's moving, it's okay. But as soon as it stops, it will eventually heat up. The liquid chlorine that we got from that planet is only just in the temperatures of it being a liquid. So five degree shift will turn it into a gas. Easy. As you can see, though, it is going into the tanks. Now, as far as I'm aware, when it is in those liquid tanks or when it is in the tanks for the rocket, it doesn't change temperature. Or I've not seen it change temperature. Now, the tanks are on the surface. They are in a vacuum. So that could be the reason. But very often, I do find that the actual liquid in a tank is very hard to change. And it takes a very, very long time and a lot of energy to do so. So I'm hoping that that means that that's by design. Alternatively, you would, I would, I would start looking for like mods that give you a cryo storage, so that you know that when you store your cryo liquids in a liquid tank with a bit of power, it remains at a temperature that makes it so it doesn't gas off like this. Because not only is it messy, depending on where it's off gassing, it is also wasting your fuel. Now, we desperately need more of these scanning rockets because we need to get out to the outskirts of space for the few tiles left that we have that are question marks because one of them is the temporal tier and we need to obviously open that up and, well, end the game. That is the option that we're using in this scenario this season is getting to the temporal tier. Now, it will be the first time for me. So for those of you that do know how to do that, good for you uh you will see in the next few episodes though that i have to figure some things out because i wasn't expecting it to be not difficult but as complex which still means difficult i don't know there's a lot of stages anyway that are incorporated in order to uh, actually open the tier and i didn't know them until i tried to go through a closed one subscribe to see that mess
And there it goes into deep space in order to hopefully uncover the tear or, or something else that's useful. I'm not necessarily just rushing to the to the temporal tear. I'm just trying to uncover everything so I get an idea of what is out there and what isn't. Maybe there's an asteroid out there that actually has liquid hydrogen or oxygen on it already. I don't know. I don't even know if that's a thing. That'd be really cool if it was though, like a cryo planet. That'd be cool. But yeah, so that one's heading up there to the top left or to the uh, left of the screen. Not really top left. What is that? Southwest. Northwest. Yeah, northwest. And from that perspective, we probably need to build at least two more of these rockets to send them out. So one needs to go southwest, one needs to go southeast. There's three at the top there, right very north. Uh, but they are separated, so they'll be a bit more difficult to do because I don't think one rocket scanner will uncover all of them. I might be able to get two of the three, but I'm going where the larger clusters are first to get more bang for my buck. And if I'm still missing what I want, I'll, of course, then send rockets up to the individual singular uh, question marks to figure out what is there. And as we time-lapse over that to see the rocket travelling through space, we are at time to end the episode anyway, so I am going to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to see what else happens. I do play other games as well, so check those out. And let me know in the comments what you do or don't like. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.